This is the scene of the first and only deadly nuclear reactor incident on US soil. This is the story of the SL-1 disaster. Welcome back to a series I'm calling Scientifically Interesting Ways to Die. In the 1950s, as the Cold War was raging, the US Army dreamt of a portable nuclear reactor that could power remote military operations. By 1959, they had an operational prototype, the Stationary Low Power Reactor No. 1, or SL-1. This 3 megawatt boiling reactor generated enough heat and electricity to power a small military base. In December of 1960, the reactor was shut down for maintenance, but nuclear reactors don't really have an off switch. Inside the core, the uranium fuel chain reaction was being kept stable by 9 cadmium aluminium control rods. Restarting the reactor was scheduled for January 4th of 1961, so the night before, three army technicians, John Brines, Richard McKinley, and Richard Legg, stepped into the SL-1 facility to reconnect the control rods to the drive motors that raised and lowered them. At the heart of the core sat the central rod, which occupied the region of highest neutron flux, meaning even a small movement could dramatically alter the stability of the fuel inside the reactor. To reconnect it to the drive motor, the team needed to lift this rod by 4 inches. But that night, maybe due to miscalculation, a moment of overconfidence, or simply human error, Brines lifted the 85-pound central control rod a full 20 inches out of the reactor core. In an instant, the neutrons that should have been absorbed by the control rod were now free to slam into uranium atoms, splitting them into lighter elements and releasing a burst of further neutrons, creating creating a runaway chain reaction. In just 4 milliseconds, the power surged to 20 gigawatts, 7,000 times its normal operating power, as temperatures hit over 2,000 degrees C, hot enough to melt the uranium fuel and rupture their aluminium cladding. As the reactor buckled, water surrounding the core instantly flashed into superheated steam, expanding faster than it could escape, and launching the 12,000 kilogram vessel 9 feet into the air. Brian, standing at the control rod, was hurled backwards by the blast, his body absorbing hundreds of sieverts of radiation, enough to shred his DNA and cook living tissue in an instant. McKinley was thrown hard against the wall, suffering massive internal injuries and severe radiation burns. But it was Leg, who was standing further back from the blast, who met the most horrific fate. The explosion's pressure wave blew loose one of the control rods, which shot upward like a cannon shell, piercing his chest and propelling him upward, pinning him against the ceiling. The painstaking decontamination effort lasted for months, with radiation hotspots on site capable of delivering a lethal dose in under 30 minutes. The investigation into the accident led to the creation of the one stuck rod rule, that requires complete shutdown capability even when the most reactive rod is stuck in the fully withdrawn position. The SL-1 incident stands as a constant reminder that in a tug of war with a nuclear reactor, no one really wins. If you like science and didn't realise that inches from death could be quite so literal, join our Patreon and follow for more.